Peter Joseph, the producer and leader of the Zeitgeist movement, is obviously a New World Order agent. He is a prime example of externalizing theosophy and Illuminati belief to the public. Notice he just popped up out of nowhere knowing how to make theosophy and the UN agenda seem appealing. For example, Joseph is all about the consciousness, the whole consciousness and this esoteric knowledge combined with the Utopia Venus Project system, right? In the following clip, Joseph does four things. He first claims we are all pure spirituality. Second, he promotes the theosophic aspect of this whole consciousness. Third, he talks about a collective consciousness of humanity resulting in a utopia or paradise dawning. And four, he makes it seem like the only other alternative to the theosophic solution is war, manipulation and division. Again, the same argument that Maxwell and Dia Murdoch used, order out of chaos scheme. In other words, the New Age Utopia will cure the current corruption. But what he doesn't tell you is that the people at the top advocating the same New Age as him are the ones who are orchestrating the current wars, corruption and manipulation. You know, we're all pure spirituality. We are the power that is. Of course there's something outside of understanding because we're only, we're just a fragment inside this larger whole. I end Zeitgeist with a very positive note. We're talking about the, the consciousness, the whole consciousness. And it's the best argument I can think of to try and settle some of these, you know, confused notions people have about life. Because you can scientifically orient yourself and, and even more importantly, spiritually orient, orient yourself into a collective consciousness to realize that we're all one organism. And the moment people stop dividing themselves up and generating religious division, political division, the moment they stop, people stop fighting amongst themselves is the moment paradise will dawn. And all the wars and all this crap, all the manipulation specifically, will stop. The following is what Peter Joseph was really saying and promoting without all of the whitewashing. David Spangler, a theosophic proponent, holds nothing back in his works. Compare what Joseph said to what he says, quote, The light that reveals to us the path to the Christ comes from Lucifer. He is the light giver. He is aptly named the morning star because it is his light that heralds for man the dawn of the greater consciousness. He is present when that dawn is realized, unquote. The Zeitgeist movement is a theosophic seed group meant to induct the populace into theosophy and the UN agenda that is political. Although they claim it isn't political, it in fact is. That's a lie. In fact, in the Zeitgeist 2009 orientation lecture for the Zeitgeist movement, Peter Joseph quotes directly from Helena Blavatsky's book, Key to Theosophy, in the introduction. Let's first look at what Blavatsky says. Inquirer, what are the objects of the Theosophical Society, Theosophist, to form the nucleus of a universal brotherhood of humanity without distinction of race, color, or creed? Inquirer, the Theosophical Society is not then a political organization? Theosophist, certainly not. It is international in the highest sense, in that its members comprise men and women of all races, creeds, and forms of thought, who work together for one object, the improvement of humanity. But as a society, it takes absolutely no part in any national or party politics." Unquote. Now here's what Peter Joseph just said in 2009. The Zeitgeist movement is not a political movement. It does not recognize the visionary notions such as nations, governments, races, religions, creeds, or class. Rather, we see the world as one organism, with the human species as a singular family. The Zeitgeist movement is not a political movement. It does not recognize the visionary notions such as nations, governments, races, religions, creeds, or class. Rather, we see the world as one organism, with the human species as a singular family. Peter Joseph and the Zeitgeist movement is nothing more than a New World Order Illuminati theosophic infiltration of the truth movement. In fact, Peter Joseph, in Zeitgeist Addendum, after persuading people that this New Age change is somehow good, he quotes Blavatsky again this time using the same derogatory term that Blavatsky uses towards those who don't buy into the New Age agenda. The emergent and symbiotic aspects of natural law. The emergent nature of reality is that all systems, whether it is knowledge, society, technology, philosophy, or any other creation, will, when uninhibited, undergo fluid, perpetual change. Likewise, the future will contain technologies, realizations, and social structures that we cannot even fathom in the present. And it is this awareness that aligns us and leads us 
on a continuous path to growth and progress. Static, empirical knowledge does not exist. Rather, it is the insight of the emergence of all systems we must recognize. This means we must be open to new information at all times, even if it threatens our current belief system and hence identities. The fact is, there is no such thing as a smart human being, for it is merely a matter of time before their ideas are updated, changed, or eradicated. And this tendency to blindly hold on to a belief system, sheltering it from new, possibly transforming information, is nothing less than a form of intellectual materialism. Intellectual materialism. The phrase intellectual materialism is a theosophic phrase first invented and used by Blavatsky and her theosophists, namely in Lucifer magazine. Sources. Now, here's Acharya S. repeating the Theosophic Principles verbatim from Blavatsky's book Ices Unveiled with respect to comparative religious studies. This occult operative Acharya S. didn't come to her conclusions based on any kind of meaningful research or study. She just quoted verbatim from Helena Blavatsky's book Ices Unveiled Volume 2 into her book The Christ Conspiracy. With respect to the false Hindu god Krishna, which Blavatsky misspells on purpose, Blavatsky asserts, quote, Krishna's mother was Devaki, or Devanagu, the Immaculate Virgin, unquote. Acharya S. then externalizes this exact theosophic principle to the public. She says, quote, Krishna was born of the Virgin Devaki, unquote. Blavatsky teaches, quote, the second person of the Trimurti, Trinity, unquote. Acharya S. externalizes the same thing. She says, quote, he was the second person of the Trinity, unquote. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Krishna is persecuted by Kansa, tyrant of Madura, but miraculously escapes. In the hope of destroying the child, the king has thousands of male innocents slaughtered, unquote. Acharya S. externalizes, quote, he was persecuted by the tyrant who ordered the slaughter of thousands, unquote. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Krishna produces miracles, cures the lame and blind, liberates the dead, unquote. Acharya externalizes, quote, he worked miracles and wonders, raising the dead and healing lepers, the deaf and the blind, unquote. Blavatsky teaches, quote, he crushed the serpent's head, unquote. Acharya S. externalizes, quote, he is depicted as having his foot on the head of the serpent, unquote. Blavatsky teaches, quote, he persecutes the clergy, charges them with ambition and hypocrisy to their faces. Tradition says he fell a victim to their vengeance, unquote. Acharya externalizes verbatim, says, quote, he castigated the clergy, charging them with ambition and hypocrisy. Tradition says he fell victim to their vengeance, unquote. With respect to Gautama Buddha, Blavatsky teaches, quote, Buddha ascends to Nirvana. Acharya externalizes and says, quote, Buddha ascended bodily to Nirvana, or heaven. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Gautama Buddha is the son of a king. Acharya S. externalizes, quote, Buddha was of royal lineage. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Buddha's mother was Maya, or Maya Deva, married to her husband, yet an immaculate virgin. Acharya S. externalizes, quote, Buddha was born of a virgin Maya. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Gautama Buddha crushes the serpent's head, i.e. like Jesus, unquote. Acharya S. externalizes, quote, he crushed the serpent's head, as was traditionally said about Jesus, unquote. Blavatsky teaches, quote, Buddha abolishes idolatry, unquote. Acharya S. externalizes and says, quote, Buddha abolished idolatry, unquote. Acharya S., or Dorothy M. Murdoch, obviously quotes profusely from Blavatsky and externalizes this theosophic doctrine to the public. She has many minions who blindly support her New Age propaganda. If you guys understand what's going on here, um, people like Peter Joseph, Acharya S., and Jordan Maxwell are pushing these esoteric views of the Bible on us. So we accept what Lucius Trust and the New World Order is going to do, their order out of chaos scheme. They're waiting for their new Christ, not Jesus Christ's second coming, but their new Christ from their new age, their new age religion. They want to get you to accept it. Remember Alice Bailey said that they're going to be externalizing the information that the hierarchy had?